Hello, lawyers, and welcome back to another episode of the Wildly Successful Law Firm Podcast. I'm your host, Nermeen, and this is an episode I'm really excited to do. It's something I've been thinking about for a while, and I haven't, let's say, had the balls or the courage to really express what I truly feel and the things that I'm going to share with you in this podcast episode. And again, after, you know, kind of being in my funk earlier this year, uh, I've sort of realized that it's really important for me to just say the things that I mean, have an opinion, take a stand. And this is that episode. So buckle up and listen in because if it's something that I have realized in the last five years, it's this. You don't have to quit the practice of law. I see a lot of people, I work with a lot of attorneys who are contemplating not wanting to practice anymore. And, you know, I've shared before, I'm in a lot of you know, Facebook groups with attorneys, you know, mom attorneys, uh, women attorneys, you know, whatever the category is. I'm in a lot of these Facebook groups. And every week there is a very long post from an attorney saying he or she no longer wants to practice law and to please give some advice on what they should do leave, stay, offer some nuggets of wisdom, some things to consider. And without going into whether or not I think it's a good idea to ask internet strangers what you should do professionally for the rest of your life and how you should support yourself and your family financially, I'm going to leave that to the side for now. But when it actually comes to the practice of law, I personally think that it is an amazing profession. I think it's a very respectable profession. And I will tell you that anytime, even today, when I introduce myself as a lawyer or I tell people that I am a lawyer because I still have my license, even though I'm not actively practicing, I see people's reactions change. Where they might see me as some young person or just someone who should not be paid attention to, all of a sudden, I've now got a step up, a rank up, a level up in front of them, just because I've said, I'm a lawyer. And I will personally never give up my license to practice. You know, I I always jokingly say, well, you know, I worked so hard to get it. My hand was a claw for many days after taking the bar exam, I owe it to the claw hand not to give up the Esquire behind my name. But the truth is that if I ever want to go back to practicing, if I ever want to do pro bono work, if I ever want to open a practice, whatever that thing is, I still have the ability to do that as an Esquire. And I will tell you that I have a little bit of a pet peeve with attorneys who become coaches and then coaches who are telling attorneys, you're overwhelmed, you're burned out, you're exhausted. And those things are valid and true. God, I'm not dismissing how exhausted you are and all of those things. But I see so many people then saying, Find the thing you love. Find the thing that you're passionate about. And I will tell you as someone who has been consulting for years and years and years, who has talked to not just attorneys, but doctors and artists and people who have all sorts of, you know, letters behind their name. We've kind of become this society that is so focused on finding the thing that you're passionate about and waking up every morning excited to do what you want to do, and it doesn't have to always be so miserable. 
And that sounds really fucking great. But the truth is that no matter what you choose to do, you are going to have at least 30 to 40% of your days that fucking suck. I love what I do right now, okay? But that doesn't mean that I wake up every morning excited, okay? My job and what I do for my clients doesn't get me out of bed every single morning. I think that people have this really fluffy, idealistic notion of having a career and, you know, you don't want to be someone who is burning out and exhausted and, you know, completely overwhelmed and doesn't spend time with their family and, you know, all the things that, you know, every scary lawyer movie is based on. But what I can tell you is that no matter what you choose to do, you're always going to have days that suck. And there are so many things that you could be doing that suck way fucking more. All right. I know this is all sounding really uh, esoteric, but I'm going to, but I'm going to be more specific here in a second. So I know a lot of attorneys are considering leaving the practice of law. And You know, mathematically speaking, there are a lot of law schools that pump out a lot of lawyers every year. And especially like during the 2000s and 2010s, you know, new law schools were popping up every other week. And, you know, the number of applicants accepted were increasing. And there's been a sharp decline over the last several years. So yes, well, I do believe volume-wise, there are more attorneys than we probably need. That also doesn't mean that you're one of the attorneys who should stop practicing. That doesn't mean that you're one of the attorneys who should pursue life coaching. And there's nothing wrong with being a life coach, by the way. That's totally okay if that's what you want to do. But I see these comparisons being made. And, you know, you would be happier if you were a financial coach, if you were a productivity coach, if you were a mom coach, if you were a a graphic designer, if you were a, you know, consultant for other law firms, whatever that thing is, right? I see all of these things being presented to lawyers and The thing that kills me about all of it is they're making it seem like the grass is greener on the other side when that grass is the same fucking color as the attorney's grass, okay? And as someone who has done 15 different things in her life, I've had a tech startup, I've worked in uh, tech, I've worked, uh, you know, as a consultant, I ran a mattress factory, I worked in a retail store, I've done so many different things in my life. I can tell you that there is no one career aha that you're going to have. And the things that I want you to hold on to with the practice of law is, yes, there is uncertainty with the law. You don't have control over your calendar, right? Especially if you are a litigation attorney. You don't know when the court is going to set that hearing or when deposition dates are going to hit or when, you know, you might get an emergency hearing or when these things are going to happen. It can be really difficult to structure your life around these uncertainties. I get it. However, what I also know is that there is uncertainty on the other side, whether you become a life coach or you become a financial coach or you become a graphic designer or whatever else that thing is that is supposedly your passion in life, right? There is uncertainty there, so much uncertainty. If you go back to working for someone else, you don't know if you're working for an asshole. You don't know if you're going to get fired if the market turns. You don't know if you start your own coaching business, are you going to be able to get clients? Are people going to be able to pay the money that you want them to pay you? There's a lot of uncertainty on both sides of it. I also know that oftentimes people will say, oh, there's so much purpose in what I do. 
whatever that thing is, right? And you might then be feeling, oh, I have no purpose in what I do. And the truth is that if you actually stopped to take stock of the times that you have done something in your legal career that had purpose, and I don't mean working at an immigration clinic, I don't mean, uh, you know, doing your pro bono work, I mean genuinely, even if you are working for a Fortune 500 company doing M&A work, whatever you are doing, you have had wins, you have had moments that are like, yes, this is why I became a lawyer. And you may not have those every day. You may not have them every week. You may not have them every month. But you better bet your ass that you've had them. And it's that you are looking at the quote unquote greener side as they have more purpose than my job does. But the truth is that you haven't actually stopped to think about the purpose that you have generated with your work. And that's on you to do, right? So stop and take a moment here. If you're a trademarks attorney, think what was a really great trademark you filed for a client that you absolutely loved and adored, right? What what did it do for them? How did it change their life? right? If you're a corporate attorney or you work as in-house counsel, I'm 100% sure that you worked on some deal. You helped some team member, some employee. You helped them in some way. Maybe you got an extended maternity leave for them. Maybe you got them really good, uh, a really good employment contract. Whatever it was, I'm 100% sure that you have done something that has purpose. I don't want you to just look at the other side and say that the grass is greener. I want you to take a moment and realize that, yes, there's uncertainty, but there's uncertainty on the other side. Yes, there's purpose on the other side, but that you also have purpose as well. Now, I'm going to talk about numbers, okay? Financially, as a lawyer, if you are doing things the right way, if you're working with a consultant, if you're working with a coach, or you've just got a really good business head on your shoulders, it is possible to make a fuck ton of money as a lawyer. <clears throat> and the odds of you making a fuck ton of money as a lawyer is a lot higher than you being a graphic designer or a coach or whatever else that other thing might be. Because most coaches are charging 50, 75, 100, 150, 200 dollars an hour and lawyers start at 200 an hour when they graduate from school. So financially, it is much more likely for you to hit 100, 200, 300, a million, 2 million. It's going to be a lot easier doing that as an attorney than it is going to be anything else. Okay? just based on the numbers alone, how your hourly rate stacks up. The fact that if you are a personal injury attorney, you're getting one third, okay? Like these numbers are huge, especially when you look at them comparatively. So keep in mind, if you're gonna go through and get in the comparisonitis, Make sure you're actually giving yourself credit where credit is due and make sure you're looking at all the things that you can compare on. Because the truth is that being a lawyer is a very respectable profession, okay? 
it is a matter of people think that you are, you know, <laughs> scum of the earth, an ambulance chaser, charge too much, whatever it is that people think about you, they are thinking that and they're like, oh, fuck, this person was smart enough to get into law school, go through three years of law school and get a fucking bar exam and pass it. Oh, shit, I'm not sitting across of someone who's stupid. Right? It lends you a lot of credibility when you just say that one word, I'm a lawyer. I'm an attorney. All of a sudden, people are like, wow, okay. Like, you have just leveled up in their eyes. And sharing from my own personal experience as someone who used to practice law and doesn't practice anymore, but is still licensed to practice, it took me eight years to leave the practice of law. And in those eight years, I did a ton of things inside of being a lawyer. So I had my own firm. I worked in-house counsel. I worked in different areas of law. I worked in personal injury. I worked in family. I worked in compliance. I worked with hedge funds. Like I did all sorts of things as a lawyer. And some of you, I think, are just throwing in the towel too early. And some of you are just seeing the other side and seeing it as the grass is greener. But God, in all of my years of experience, never has the grass actually been greener, ever. It may have looked it, and then once you got on the other side, you were like, ooh, this is actually pretty yellow. <laughs> or this is just painted green, but it's really dead underneath. So as you are going through your year, and you are starting to get tired and you're starting to get exhausted. I am not going to discount or dismiss how you are feeling. I just want you to know that doesn't mean jump ship. That just means something needs to change. But the thing that needs to change may not necessarily be practicing law. Okay? It is a great profession. And I still encourage people to go to law school. Because there is so much that you learn as a lawyer that other people just don't learn. And it's really amazing when you talk to people and you're like, wow, I, I guess it's just really natural for me to be able to read a contract and understand what it means. And then you have other people who are like, but what does that mean? You know, especially if it comes to like reps and warranties, because that can always sound a little weird, right? Or even how to read laws. Like, we are so good at that. And then you come across someone else and you're like, wait, but it says or, not and. And so there are things that we are just designed to look for and understand better. So I say all of this because I believe in you. I don't believe that you have to quit practicing law. It is a damn good profession. And I just want you to stop and ask yourself, if you weren't a lawyer, what would you be doing? And would that thing have the potential to pay you $300 an hour, $400 an hour? Does that thing have the potential to allow you to make $100,000 in your first year? $300,000 after three years. So for those of you who are like, wow, this lifestyle of being a lawyer is really tough, I get it. It is. But guess what? It's also tough doing other shit too. And I am the face of that, right? Like I have done many different things and they, they've all been tough. There's no one thing that is like perfect for your lifestyle, right? You can have things that are more easily accommodating but that doesn't mean that it's perfect. So as you're going through this year, if you know anyone who's thinking about quitting the practice of law, send this to them, share this with them, please. It goes a long way. 
And I really appreciate you listening in as I make my stand on this, which is being a lawyer is a damn good profession. And there is nothing wrong with feeling overwhelmed and exhausted, but maybe you want to look at switching your practice area or just working less, right? Like make less, work less, but start really looking at the purpose and what you do. Start seeing that, holy shit, it's uncertain on the other side too. And it's not just uncertain on my side. All right. Thank you so much for listening into this episode. And I will be back again next week with a new episode. Thanks, lawyers. Lawyers. Lawyers.